Our State of the U.S. segment tonight, Hawaii Judge Derek Watson blocked the implementation of President Trump's new immigration executive order just hours before it was set to go into effect. What makes Judge Watson's ruling troubling is that it's predicated on feelings, that the state had an interest in preventing its citizens from feeling marginalized rather than basing the ruling on the text of the law. Now, odds are this will not be the last we hear about this case, as there is a strong likelihood it will end up before the Supreme Court. But take a look. It seemed like Judge Watson took it, uh, took it even one step further where he, he noted that it, 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 in the decision that it actually appears that the, the, the fact that there was such great pains to make the language more neutral actually served as a pretext. It, it actually showed that, that they were trying even harder uh, to, to uh, mask what was uh, a religious animus, and, and animus just means, you know, basically a hostility, and, 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 that's, and that's, what we were, uh, that's what we were arguing today. With me now, attorney and Democratic strategist Adam Sostrin and Republican strategist Bill Meyerling. Gentlemen, happy St. Patty's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's. All right, Bill, let me turn to you first. We heard what he said, what the Hawaii Attorney General said, and this is what struck me as so strange about the ruling of this case. It seemed to me that it, it didn't matter what the text of the law was, even though that's you know theoretically what judges should rule on. It didn't matter what the text of the law was because <laughs> of a comment Trump made in the past. You know, there's so much to unpack here, Liz, and you're exactly right when you look at it. The, the, no one will disagree that the first executive order's rollout was, was badly botched. Uh, but the critics of the first executive order said specifically to the administration what they needed to do to make it palatable. In the second rollout, the administration did exactly that. And now we're back to political grandstanding and, and legislating from the bench instead of interpreting and executing the law. And Adam, let me let me pivot right to you. I mean, you're a lawyer. You know how you know how this process works here. Right. The Trump administration, whether or not they agreed with what happened to their first executive order, they addressed the concerns. They addressed the confusion. They, I mean, Trump himself, President Trump himself, called this a watered down version. He took a whole country off the list. You know, he made sure that there were exceptions for people who'd been here before, no religious preferences, and yet the court still isn't accepting or isn't looking at it for what it is. They're looking at it because they don't like Donald Trump's attitude. Well, it is a very interesting issue, and it's probably gonna end up in the Supreme Court, whether it's eight or nine judges, I guess we don't know at this point, but it's gonna be interesting to see what happens in the Senate. Uh, it is unusual. Uh, my understanding is at least when there's no ambiguity in a statute. Uh, it's rare for the court, and the courts are actually, for the most part, opposed to looking outside the statute uh, for things like motive. Um, so this is, this is a little bit unusual. I think the court was saying, Mr. Trump, or President Trump, despite the fact that this is a national security issue and it's an executive order, uh, when people are you know, alleging any kind of religious discrimination, uh, we're gonna go behind uh, the words of the statute. Right, and that, Bill, let me turn to you. That's where it was a little strange to me because Democrats are the ones in this case looking at the intent behind the law, yet they're the ones who, you know, when it comes to constitutional issues, they're not interested in the intent of our founders or our framers whatsoever. They just want it to be a living text. You know, that's exactly right. And what's interesting about it, I often turn to the oath of office that the president takes. You know, it's the shortest oath of office for any public servant to protect and defend uh, the Constitution of the United States. And that's it. You know, what's interesting about the Constitution, uh, it applies to citizens and to legal residents. It doesn't apply to people outside the borders. So the president is doing what he thinks is best to protect the people of America from a very real foreign threat. And that seems like a perfectly laudable goal. If I could just briefly, uh, you know, add some uh, input to that that last point. It's interesting when it when it comes to respect to standing. I mean, I've heard a lot of dis discussions about it. Of course, we know that the uh, the, f the First Amendment's been incorporated through the uh, the, f the Fourteenth Amendment, uh, and you know, obviously, you can't. Uh, uh, violate equal protection of the law for citizens and for persons under the jurisdiction. But the issue isn't whether or not, uh, and this is sort of a tangential issue, because I think that the main thing is the administration sort of abiding by what they were required to do in revising the executive order. But the issue is, uh, with respect to uh, the standing, is the states. It's not from the, uh, the residents of the, uh, of the six countries that are prohibited from coming to the United States. It's, a, it's whether or not in, for instance, in this case in Maryland and Hawaii, uh, there's been some sort of harm 
Uh, that's what standing is. So if there's some sort of deficit, if they're getting less tax dollars, if there's an issue with respect to uh, fewer uh, people going to their universities, there is some sort of a harm. So that's where the standing issue comes in. And I just, I just wanted to right, and I, that I, I, I get that, but it also seems to me that that takes into account uh, people's feelings a little bit too much. And I don't want to sound heartless here, but when you're talking about family members visiting, when you're talking about people, you know, coming back to, you know, finish their college degree, if they're visiting back and forth, I mean, that's what the exceptions in this revised executive order take take into account. Those types of people shouldn't be denied entry if they've entered our nation before, if they've ever set foot in our country. I don't believe that it applies to them, but what does apply to them, how it might affect these states, is the fact that the national security issue that Bill was talking about just a moment ago. I mean, from these six countries, or I suppose it was seven countries in the first order, there have been 72 people convicted in our country of terror-related charges that have come over from those nations to our country. Right now, there are an active, I believe it's 300 invest terror-related investigations. I don't understand why a judge would think that that national security aspect is less important than the feelings of his citizens when it comes to their family visiting. Well, when it, when it comes to the uh, what the Justice Department put forward, uh, there were two examples that they brought forward. Uh, they didn't bring hundreds of examples, and I think there is an, an issue with respect to uh, uh, you know people that are investigating what's happening in these different countries, whether or not those citizens are in fact a threat to the United States. Uh, that's not so. Uh, entirely clear. Uh, there are threats, uh, but how clear and, and present are they? Um, but of course, these are these are things or prerogatives that come you know into the play from the executive. But because there was such uh, limited evidence that came forward, and there were so many statements uh, that Donald Trump made, President Trump made during the campaign, uh, the court said, okay, well, we're not going to just look at the order, uh, which appears to be worded appropriately. We're going to go outside the order. It's, the whole thing is very unusual. Bill, and when it, when it comes to this idea that the, the national security threat is questionable, to use both Adam Sturm and I believe that was the word used by uh, the Attorney General of Hawaii, I mean, is that the role of the judiciary to decide whether the president's policy, you know, is, is an adequate protection, or is it just their role to decide whether it's constitutional? It's their role to decide whether or not it's constitutional, and it is not their role to take into account comments made outside of the executive order. You know, people on the campaign trail have said lots of things. Uh, I think uh, Bill Clinton said, uh, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. George W. H. W. Bush, excuse me, said no new taxes. People say lots of things. I believe that what the president was saying on the campaign trail was it was his goal to keep America safe. Now, that said, it's for me to opine on what he meant. It's not for the judiciary to decide what he intended. Right, and Adam, jump in here, because I, I, don't, I, don't, I guess I don't know how Democrats can defend this. I mean, I understand that a lot of Democrats, a lot of liberals don't like this policy, but how could it be changed to satisfy you if the, if the elements of satisfaction just have to do with following the law, not agreeing with the policy? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to come forward more on just the legal perspective. When it comes to a religious discrimination, it is true that there is case precedent uh, that they can go, in fact, outside the legislation itself, you know, however neutral it may seem, uh, to find out what the intent of the legislature was. Uh, so that's what's happening here. Um, and, but, but, I, but I really feel like, as I stated earlier, with respect to prior Supreme Court precedent, I think that the, the idea is when the, the legislation is, is very unambiguous, uh, the court doesn't typically go beyond, and I don't think it's appropriate, for the most part, for the court to look into campaign statements. They should be looking at, for instance, what he's doing as president right now. Right, because let, let me push back just for a second, because if, if you look outside, if you look for intent or you look outside the letter of the law here, then theoretically Donald Trump would never be able to set any sort of immigration policy ever in the entirety of his presidency, even though the chief executive of our nation is both constitutionally and via the Supreme Court has the authority to set immigration law. If you're just looking at his old comments, there's nothing he could ever do in four or eight years that would allow him to set policy then? That makes no sense. Right, right. When do they decide uh, that, that enough time has gone by where he's made a, a real change of heart? You know, even Alan Dershowitz brought up that point. He said if the same legislation had been proffered by Obama uh, versus Trump, uh, then the court would have said, yeah, it, it passes constitutional muster. Right, and Bill, last word here, because it seems to me it's not, again, not the role of ju the judiciary to decide whether the president had a change of heart. I mean, that kind of come-to-Jesus moment, that should be more of your confessor or your preacher's role, not a judge in Hawaii.
You know, that's exactly right. You know, I think about the judge in Hawaii really lacking standing in this issue. It doesn't make sense uh, that they would be uh, attacking the president's executive order. You know, further still, even looking at A.G. Schneiderman out of New York, the made-for-TV A.G., if he's going to come out in support of the, uh, the case in Hawaii, then it's a pretty good case to me that it has no standing. All right, gentlemen, we're out of time. Thank you both for coming on the show. Thanks uh, and enjoy me. your St. Patrick's Day evening. All right, guys, our final tipping point of the night, eight ways to reject your liberal privilege. We'll be right back for that.